Well, school is almost out for the summer across the United States as we head into Memorial Day weekend. Many families getting ready to make the transition into summer break mode. Yeah, but changing up routines can be a little hard. Bedtimes become inconsistent, daily structure is thrown into flux, and some parents are still working on the weekends and long shifts. So what's the best way to transition to summer break? Here with some tips to make that transition smoother is family and clinical psychologist, Dr. Jen Harstein. Thank you so much for being here, Dr. Jen. Thank you. So this is a big one, especially <laughs> for parents. What do you think the most important thing for parents to prioritize during this transitional season is? It's a great question. And I think one of the things we really want to think about is what does everybody have the capacity for, mm -hmm. right? And what are the interests of your kids? So we want to prioritize kind of like what's going to help there be some thriving this summer? Kids need downtime. They mm -hmm. need that break. They need that moment. But what's going to help them thrive? What do you have the capacity to do as a parent? And what works best for your family? And those things are the things you want to keep in mind. What are some of the questions and things you should consider to strike that balance between having downtime, which I think is so vital. I mean, yes. this is a debate we're struggling with in my own house. <laughs> like, how much is too much activity for the summer? But how much is like a little? You need to get out there, do some volunteering, right. maybe get a summer job. Right. And I think I think some of it will depend on the age of your child, yeah. right? So you want to have structure. Kids really actually do better with structure. Mm -hmm. So whatever that structure, loosen it up, revamp it, but have that. But be flexible. So especially for your older child, mm -hmm. what are they interested in? What are they willing to do? Nothing is not an answer. Right. Mm -hmm. And okay. What are you willing to do? What are you open to? Let's find some of those opportunities. But if we force it on them, you're just going to have constant battles. That's yeah. Oh, I love that. Which you don't want to have to deal with. And then, I mean, there's also the question of too much programming. Mm -hmm. How much is too much for kids? There is too much, right? <laughs> we, and I think we think kids need to always be busy. No, but yeah. we as adults take time to, like, to have downtime, and we take that time. Mm. Kids need that too. So I think first thing, know your child, right? What are they capable of? Mm -hmm. What are you as the parent? Are you going to run around from activity to activity to activity? Because that burns you out, right? So like, what is the capacity? What are we able to do? What are the interests? Maybe you make a list of all the things that you might want to do, and mm -hmm. then check them off little by little. And maybe you don't get all of them. But right. like, work together as a unit to figure out what you're really Really capable of accomplishing. You don't have to do all of the things. Yes. Sometimes you're doing too much, yes. especially during the school year. What about a lot of parents? We're going to continue working full time. People are working weekends, working longer hours. How do you manage that schedule without feeling mm -hmm. over like burned out? <laughs> and, bur and, yeah. and you can, right? Yeah. I think this is a great opportunity to like lean into your your people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So who's available to help? Mm -hmm. Maybe someone can pick up that that ride, help with that. Maybe you can carpool. Maybe you can have like a neighborhood watch, yeah. right? Which is what I did as a yes. kid. We kind of rotated houses yeah. and, and and each parent kind of watched a different day. Yes. So what can you lean into to use to support you and really check in with yourself? Is this too much for me? And if it's too much for me, it's okay to say no to your child. Yes. Mm -hmm. it, it really is. I'm glad you reminded folks of that. Yeah. And people need rest. These kids need rest. And a lot of time parents want their children to have a brain break but still be mentally stimulated. So yeah. what are some summer activities they might be able to engage in? There is learning opportunity everywhere. And the thing you're referring to is summer slide. When kids do nothing, we kind of do have this backslide right. in their learning curve. Mm -hmm. But there is learning opportunity any everywhere. Plan a trip. Mm -hmm. Have the kids create the budget. You're doing math. Mm -hmm. Have them look at a map and figure out what the best route to get there is. There's geography. Yeah. Maybe you make recipes based on that region. There's a little bit of chemistry. Yeah. Maybe you have a book club with your family, right? I mean, there's lots of different ways you can kind of be creative in how you learn. Mm -hmm. So just kind of come up with fun ways so it doesn't feel like learning. And take advantage of some of the free resources like the yes. fairs, the museums mm -hmm. in your town. Yes. Libraries. Yeah, and I love oh that you God, talked like about library. engaging with your kids in some of the activities. Yes. The more you involve them, the more engaged they are. Our bored kids get into trouble, yeah. <laughs> so keep them not bored. Family and clinical psychologist Dr. Jen Hartstein, as always, thank you so much, Dr. Jen. Thank that was you. really helpful. Yeah, so good. Thank you. You're watching NBC News Daily. Stay with us.